Hi there, this is Evan here. And for those of us interested in language learning, a very interesting piece of research came out today. Um, and uh, the abstract uh, is about brain waves. Um, and for the very first time, um, neural signatures of explicit types of learning and implicit types of learning have been identified in the human brain while learning is taking place. For example, um, learning how to pedal a bicycle, um, learning how to speak um, a language uh, just by hearing people speak it around you, versus, for example, memorizing the rules of how to play chess. These are two distinct types of learning. Um, one is learning, for example, a, a list of rules, grammars, for example, and the other is uh, just learning something from exposure to it, like learning how to ride a bicycle. And for the very first time, um, these two types have been distinguished in the human brain. Um, so they've gone from being theoretical constructs to being uh, factual constructs. The, the neurobiology of learning is, is fascinating. And how we learn complex cognitive tasks, how we learn motor skills, um, and a combination of these things. Um, for example, when young children learn language, they're not learning it explicitly, they're learning it implicitly. And there's a great divide in, in language teaching books on how to go about doing this. Do you teach grammar intensively or not? Um, speaking to lots of Latin teachers, um, the consensus seems to be the case that you cannot learn the language from just learning the rules. You actually have to use it as well. Both those things have to be in tandem. And the emphasis needs to be on usage and not on rules. So if you spend all your time learning the rules, you won't actually be able to do it. It's like learning the rules of chess and never actually playing chess. You need to do both of those things at the same time. So most Latin students under the traditional grammar translation method never learn any Latin because they spend all their time learning the rules of the game and never play the game. So when neurons fire, they produce electrical signals and these then combine to form brain waves. Um, the, the goal of the research, of course, is to try and resolve problems with memory. Um, it's been known for a long time that there are different types of learning. Um, the realization that sort of a, in terms of brain science occurred in um, a case, uh, his name is uh, Henry Malaison, um, called H.M. in the literature who developed severe amnesia in 1953 because he had severe epilepsy and they gave him an operation removing part of his brain. And what happened was he couldn't remember certain things. For example, he couldn't remember that he had eaten breakfast five minutes previously. But he was able to learn motor skills. For example, he could learn to trace a five-pointed star and remember how to do it so he could do it again later on. So even though he couldn't remember he'd eaten breakfast, he could remember certain things that he did uh, through action. And those skills improved over time, so he could learn lots of different things, but only implicit things, not explicit things. So that indicated at this early stage that there are two different types of learning going on in the brain. So explicit learning is learning that you are conscious of, you are aware of it, and you think about what you're learning and you can articulate what you've learned. For example, you've memorized a passage in a book or you've learned the steps in, in chess. That's the, that's the explicit learning. And the implicit learning um, takes place without thinking about it clearly. So motor skill learning or muscle memory type of learning or learning that you get by being in the language environment and you just hear the language around you and you start to acquire bits and pieces of it. Um, the kind of learning you get from learning to juggle or from riding a bicycle or from imitation uh, of language patterns and you get better at it by repeating it and uh, doing it over and over and over. You can't actually articulate uh, what you're learning. So under the um, this system of learning language, for example, you may be able to say things. So let's just say you start, take a textbook like Steadman's textbook for learning Greek, which contains almost no grammar at all. Um, you will be able to speak different bits of Greek by the end of it, but you won't be able to articulate the rules. 
Um, the same thing if you were to use uh, Adler's method without looking at the grammar sections. By the end of it, you would have a, quite a good knowledge, working knowledge of Latin, but you wouldn't be able to articulate the rules necessarily. Um, of course, if you study it with the grammar sections as well, then you will learn the rules as you go along, and these two things will then play off each other. Um, when you um, learn a language, it's useful to know some grammar as well, but I believe that most of the learning actually takes place um, implicitly and not explicitly. Um, for example, learning music. Language and music are, are closely allied, so you can learn all the rules of music, you can learn theory, but if you don't actually pick up an instrument and play, you're never going to actually know how to make music. That's why most Latin students using the grammar translation method and the traditional classroom methods can't actually read Latin fluently. They have to laboriously translate uh, into their own language and don't have any Latin going on in their heads. Um, so earlier studies had taken place um, studying animal behavior, etc. And they found that there were signatures in the brains for different types of tasks. And uh, that was with animals. But of course, uh, with people, it's, um, it's different. Um, I'm not going to go into the depth of this, but if you go online and look up um, brain waves and learning and recent research, you'll find this paper. Um, it's from, the, uh, from MIT. Um, so if you go onto their website, you should be able to find a reference to it. The journal article is a Scott uh, Brincat and Evan Anzulatos and Earl Miller. And the title of the study is a meta-analysis suggests different neural correlates for implicit and explicit learning um, in the journal Neuron in October 2017. So this sort of reinforces uh, ideas uh, of language learning promoted by uh, people such as Krashen. And um, I'm also a great proponent of this, that you learn through experience. Um, and so I think if you want to be good at a language, it's important to listen to an enormous amount of it. Um, and audio is extremely important, which is why I highly recommend that you go over to latinum.org.uk and subscribe to my Patreon so that you can fill your brain up with Latin audio and get lots and lots of high quality, um, implicit language learning. Um, far more enjoyable than explicit learning and far more likely to lead you to a practical result. Bye.